My name is Tara Jensen. I'm going to be giving you an update on uh, MET Plus version 4.0.0 and beyond. I'd like to recognize also Keith Seawright, who is the uh, DTC GSL node coordinator, as well as the 20 plus members of the MET Plus team that have made this possible. Here's a list of the repositories for MET Plus. Um, you'll notice that they all start with github.com, DT Center, and then each one of the components. You'll notice that we have the um, Python wrappers um, in the MET Plus repository. The core um, statistical engine is in the MET repository. And then there's five different repositories that basically make up the MET Plus analysis suite. Um, MET Viewer and MET Express are the two uh, user interfaces. And then DataDB, CalcPy, and, and PlotPy are what support those two user interfaces. Um, I call this out because I also wanted to point out in version 4.0, that was the first official release of MET DataDB, MET CalcPy, and MET PlotPy. Then with the release of MET CalcPy and MET PlotPy, what that did was it allowed in version 4.0.0, um, the ability to be able to use command line for plotting and not necessarily have it connected to a database. Uh, so this uh, workflow here showing that the MET plus tools um, generate .stat files or the statistics files. Um, and then MET CalcPy can automatically read a, you know, a full directory of those files or you know, a suite of those files using MET DB load, but not putting it into a database. And then um, MetCalcPy and MetPlotPy can be used to generate diagnostic files, um, plots, excuse me, primarily for S2S diagnostics, but also um, you know, run the batch engine um, to compute uh, routine statistics plots. In Met version 10.0.0, I just wanted to call out that we did add a new tool called Yoda to NC, which supports the Jedi Yoda file format and, com and converts that into a NetCDF file format that MET can read. So we have direct support for, uh, you know, data coming out of Yoda. Besides um, bug fixes and uh, more infrastructure related uh, developments, additional MET, uh, version 10.0.0 enhancements included um, support for rotated lat long grids, um, adding um, the computation for the Briar score to match uh, how EMC um, computed it um, for the VSDB method, just so that there is uh, an ability to um, compute that for um, historic purposes. Also adding support for the Herzbach CRPS algorithm, uh, support for additional net CF point observation data sources, the inclusion of the multivariate mode capability, which I'll show on the next slide. I already talked about Yoda to NC, and then improved Python embedding support, uh, where we uh, removed the pickle file dependency to decrease versionitis, and then um, also supported um, more data uh, types, including X-ray, um, uh, NetCDF ensemble files, and Gaussian grids. One of the more exciting uh, additions to MET Plus 4.0, or actually MET 10.0.0, um, was the addition of multivariate mode, which is basically an extension of mode to include two or more fields to be able to identify uh, complex features that you know can uh, require more than one um, variable in order to to define it. Um, and so this shows you how specific humidity gradient, along with temperature gradient and the 10 meter wind shift, were all combined into a super object um, to identify the dry line that um, occurred. This is a um, a project that we have now um, written a, a follow-on um, proposal for and that has been funded. So we'll be working with WPC um, over the next two years to refine um, this capability. So look for more interesting things coming out of um, multivariate mode in the future. So enhancements to MET Viewer include adding support for new uh, MET line types and the aggregation associated with that. The addition of circular bootstrap method for confidence intervals that was uh, uh, contributed by Eric Gilliland um, and, and supported through the DTC and CAR base funds. Um, through the Air Force verification and validation activities, we added in equivalence testing bounds plots 
um, because they uh, developed that through that um, activity and then, you know, are using it quite routinely. And then also added support for weights in scorecards. And then um, through the R2O project, we've been um, working on transitioning the capability of many of our line uh, plot templates for MetViewer from R over to Python. Those include series, reliability diagram, performance diagram, and histogram. And you can see um, here that um, we do have a, a box to check if you want to use the Python uh, method. Um, we still have the R method in place just for testing purposes and, and to help build uh, user confidence in, in using the Python methods. Um, MetExpress was actually on version 4.1.0 rather than 4.0.0, um, and uh, but that was what was part of the coordinated release. And that was the addition of the Met Tropical Cyclone app, um, as well as they added in performance diagrams to the Met Ensemble app. So uh, some nice capability was added there. Overall, for Met Plus, um, the enhancements include uh, reconfiguring the directory structure to make it easier to identify ancillary files for use cases. For example, if we were using Python embedding, so the Python script that was used um, for a, a example use case, um, that is now included in a directory that is named after the use case, as well as if there's any met config files that have specific configuration options that um, can't be handled um, you know, within the met plus um, configuration. Uh, options, then uh, that's also included in those directories, so it just makes things uh, a lot more bundled and easy to find. Additionally, um, we added support for many of the commonly changed MET config um, variables and, and kind of cleaned up how overrides were handled as um, for configuration to, to uh, provide better communication between MET Plus and MET. Um, <clears throat> and finally, there were 27 new use cases that were added, um, you know, the, the biggest number in, were included um, as S2S diagnostics, and then we added eight new um, wrappers uh, for MET tools to demonstrate uh, how to use those particular tools in a very basic manner. Here's some of the um, new use cases that were added for the 2021 release. I kind of already covered some of this in the um, Met Plus overview, but just wanted to point out that much of this was added um, very recently, and that includes the TC Genesis work, um, the S2S diagnostics, including um, also through non-DTC projects, we added uh, the difficulty index from NRL, um, which helps identify where a forecast is difficult just because it's close to a user uh, indicated threshold um, for uh, future relative uh, use cases um, to look for systematic errors. Uh, we've added in the capability of being able to compute diagnostic fields like integrated water vapor, um, potential vorticity, and so forth, um, things that are not necessarily included in uh, standard model output um, into uh, those future relative use cases through Python embedding. So that has been added support for uh, tailborne Doppler radar and, and drop sounds um, for use for TC evaluation. Here, um, just showing uh, both instantaneous and central blocking latitudes. Um, so the upper left hand um, figure kind of shows that blocking was identified and, and where that occurred. So you get a kind of a spatial representation as well as um, the frequency of um, intense uh, in, in, uh, instantaneously blocked longitudes, um, uh, you know, and, and the longitudes are across the, the x-axis and then the frequency is across the y-axis. And then uh, getting a, a sense of um, the central blocking latitude. Um, all of these are computed using um, uh, the methodology from Barnes and Slingo and, and Woolings. Um, and are now available in Met Plus. Also included, and once again, uh, much of this is, is actually computed outside of um, the core Met tools. We use the Met tools for some reading in of files, but for the most part, a lot of the rest of it is, it is uh, contained in Python, um, in Met CalcPy and Met PlotPy. So we do have computation um, support for computation of EOFs and then using uh, another method for k-means to identify weather regimes. Um, and uh, basically there's six weather regimes that are identified 
Um, and then uh, what the tools do is that they write out um, the met match pair uh, output file so that um, we can then compute things like skill scores and so forth. Here's what our release uh, cycle looks like. We had our version 4.0.0 release in May of this year. Um, we're shooting for our next coordinated release in December of this year. And in between we, what we have are these beta releases that allow us to um, to get our development out uh, to the interested users and stakeholders um, much more frequently so that they can do testing, make sure that things are configured the way that um, they want it to um, be configured, make sure it's computing the um, statistic or diagnostic the way they're expecting and so forth. Um, and so uh, in the next couple of slides, I'm gonna be talking about beta one, beta two, beta three, and beta four. We um, just released beta two at the end of August and we're shooting to have our next releases of beta three, late September, early October, and then our final beta in um, mid to late November. So here's just uh, one example, once again, kind of in the S2S arena, um, that was added um, in uh, beta one and beta two, and so now is in the develop branch um, for version 4.0.1. It's not formally released, but it is available to interested users for testing. And that includes RMM, um, both RMM1 and RMM2, as well as the uh, um, OLR-based MJO index or OMI, which are standard um, S2S metrics. So just kind of fitting um, development in, into um, the beta structure, then, um, you know, things that we're adding um, is uh, some uh, TC, uh, support for TC Gen edex, um, so probability um, uh, forecasts that should be in beta three. Um, we just recently added in um, CBS index, um, which is kind of like the go index and numerical weather prediction um, index, but it has very you know specific definition. So um, we've added in support for that as well as um, you know uh, working towards trying to uh, be able to um, put that that information into MetViewer and be able to aggregate over you know multiple cases and so forth. Um, we're working on a project with CPC and they have some very um, specific variants of some of the statistics. Uh, and so we've had to um, do some development to, to support um, in their use of climatologies. Um, and then uh, also marine and cryosphere verification, we're integrating in the EMC verification package. Um, five out of the six um, uh, different um, measures that were in um, the EMC package um, are, were included in the beta two release. The sixth is, is gonna be in the beta three. G beta, which is a distance map metric um, developed by um, NCAR's Eric Gilliland um, was included in beta two. Um, we're going to be working, as I said before, on improving the multivariate mode over the next year. Um, verification uh, on native UFS, MPAS, and LFRIC for the Met Office domains should be in beta three and beta four, at least a prototype, um, you know, an, an initial start on it. It may be um, not quite fully mature, but at least the, there's a starting point. As well as precipitation type verification, uh, expect that in beta. Um, also uh, transitioning the remaining Met viewer plots to Python is ongoing. I would expect that to um, hopefully be completed by the, the coordinated release in, in um, December. Um, we're going to be breaking apart ensemble stat into a pre-processing step and then, um, you know, being able to compute the statistics. Um, so uh, expect that in, in beta three and beta four. Um, there's some additional um, extra TC statistics and diagnostics that we're adding in through our um, uh, marine and cryosphere um, verification um, project at, in NCAR. Um, already added in the RMM 1 and 2 and OMI, um, adding in some skill scores for the indices. Um, and then over the next year, we're going to be working with um, external collaborators to add in some um, uh, additional evaluation metrics for ENSO, as well as um, land atmosphere coupling. Um, and then we will also be working on adding in a use case to show how to use MetPlus for evaluating gravity wave drag, as well as um, working with some external collaborators on some met uh, metrics for sudden, sudden stratospheric warming. 
So that, that's a brief summary of um, some of the uh, recent additions to MET Plus as well as what you should expect um, coming up in the new coordinate, coordinated release and then um, probably in the next uh, coordinated release as well. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and contact myself or, or Keith. Um, feel free to check out our discussion forum um, at, on GitHub in the MET Hub, Hub excuse me, MET Plus re repository. And then um, you can find all the users and developer guides um, if you go to um, dtcenter.org community code MET Plus. Thank you.